Hey folks, it's your old pal Stretch. I'm replacing the turn signal switch on my 65 Bel Air wagon. And uh, I thought I would show you how you replace the switch in reverse. I've already torn it all apart. But if you're out there on the internet and you're trying to figure out what's going on with the, uh, like just how big of a job this is, well, I can show you. Now, I wanted to fix something in the dashboard too. So I tore the dash out. You don't need to, but you will wind up pulling everything off of the steering column. Uh, the switch goes all the way through that column and there really wasn't a good way to feed it without taking that those collars or whatever you want to call them off because it snakes through this little hoop that supports the steering column and under this little retainer here which has a little bolt you have to take out so to get them out of this little retainer I had to drop the steering column and uh it's really kind of a pain in the butt. You gotta take off the steering wheel, the horn and everything. So I'm going to go in reverse and start putting it back together and I'll show you what I'm talking about. So I got this switch from Cars Inc. And it looks to be a really high quality switch, but there's a couple things about it that I'm gonna to have to do. So you see this, this is the contact for the horn, that shiny gold part. And then inside that is the upper bearing for the steering column. Notice that they don't come in the switch. So I'm gonna to have to pull those out and then the contact for the horn is that little black wire you see there. Can you see that coming out of this top switch? That I'm going to need to splice out of this wiring harness. And then there's a light bulb right there for the Prindle, the parking indicator, you know, P-R-N-D-L, Prindle. So I'm gonna to have to get that wire out of this loom and transpose it to the new switch too. So that's kind of a pain in the butt. All right, then here is the switch that's installed right here. I've replaced the bearing and I hit it with a little bit of grease. And I've got some dielectric grease that I'm gonna put on here when we get it all together. Um, this all comes off in like one big caterpillar here. Be careful you don't lose this little disc. It fits in between these two things. And we're gonna put it back on the steering column, which uh, then needs to have the cable routed through here. There's a little uh, cover holder goes on there. And then it's going to come through this holder, which goes through this loop, which is the support for the drive, sh or the drive shaft steering column. Uh, so I'm going to get all that buttoned up and I'll show you what it looks like. So here we've got the pins removed from the connector. You can see that little tab on the top there. I, I don't know if you're familiar with these or not, so I'm just gonna run you through it. They fit in these little holes like that. If you scoot a screwdriver, a really small one into the top there, you can push that tab down and pull the wire out of the back. I used this little screwdriver, which was actually on the verge of being too big. One of those uh, little teeny ones like you get for working on your phone and stuff might work really well. So I've removed the horn button and the button that goes the button the wire that goes for this light for the prindle uh at first i was like why would they not include that horn contact in the switch setup but i guess they would have to include this bearing and i don't know why it's not one piece but it's not so just know that so anyway i'm going to thread those out and uh then i'm going to thread the the new wire loom back through and just kind of tape those back together. You can see that this may have been replaced once before because the two wires I'm removing have been spliced back onto those couplers. There you go. The wires are going through here. There's a little screw, where is it? Uh, right there. It holds that, it secures this, uh, I don't know what you call it, holder. And then the other one you can see is right there right there mine it's messed up i'm not sure why it won't hold the wires when i screw it in it pops up but it was like that before and it's not really harmful to have these things just kind of sitting here so i'm not going to stress out too much about it it was like that when i got the car and it's probably been that way for a long long time the next step is going to be to uh, put the steering column back up and then we'll plug these in to the 
the socket they come from, it has a hook on the back. And I think that that is intended to go to clip on some sort of support or something that's higher up there, but it was just clipped on the vent, uh, what would you call it? The vent, the sheath for the vent opening wire. So I'm gonna do that again. And then up here, and then up here, this collar for the shifter, you have to turn it a little bit to slide it onto its, into its correct position. And then this, there are some, see those uh, sort of metal tabs right there? They fit into these slots in the back of the Prindle housing. And so it goes on and it turns on. Which of course it won't do while I'm trying to film it. So, uh, but once I get the steering column up into place, then everything should have enough room for that to be possible. All right. I actually did manage, manage to get that clip to clip up onto this. Um, it's a mount for the steering column that goes back and ties in with the firewall. So I, it clips up on there. It's nice and neat. And then I've got the column put back together. Uh, I put the uh, this collar back on. And then there's this trim piece here, which is really neat. It's just kind of held in place from the back. Let's see, can you see it? Uh, with another piece of metal that I can't find. Here it is. So this just kind of goes on there like that and clamps it to the dashboard basically. It's held on with a couple of those little stamped nuts like this. That are I think three eighths. Now up here, I wanted to show you the way that this comes off and goes on. See those tabs? They're notched and so if you turn it this way you can pull it off. Turn it that way, it's locked in place. And then the switch just goes on here. And then you'll have to uh, make sure and route the little wires, that gray wire back there will also go through this little retainer. And we'll screw it together and I'll see you in a second. Okay, back again with the switch installed. Here's the old switch. You see these, this little, uh, I don't know, clippy deal here. There's supposed to be one on the bottom, it's broken. And I don't know if you can see where they, you really can't. There's that little clippy deal there. And there's a whole another part of the mechanism that you really can't see it, but that part down there that was completely broken off of the old switch. So mechanically it performs. Uh, there are three screws, one there, and then the other two are, uh, you have to access them by moving the turn signal lever to get them. They are what stabilizes this Prindle housing. And I'm going to, I just put the, the negative lead back on the battery. So let's see if we have turn signals. Uh, there we go. There's one. The other one. Fantastic. All right. I'm going to try the headlights too, because I, I replaced some of the dashboard bulbs. Great. All right, so now I'm going to do reassembly of the the uh, shifting lever and the steering wheel. If you're curious too, this is the switch mechanism for the turn signals. Just a couple of connections that the uh, little lever under here, which let me show you on here. It's this this little thing here. When you move the switch. That little thing just pushes one of those wires to connect to a, uh, a connection point that, that completes the circuit. So there's that. Uh, let me think if there was anything else I wanted to tell you about this. I don't think so. Okay, on to the next phase. The little column shifter here, I don't know if you can see in there, there's a hole at the bottom and that is what this little nub fits into down in there. When I took it apart, a little spring came out. I don't know exactly where that spring went, but I have to assume it goes down in the bottom there and that the uh, that it provides resistance against the 
the little nub so that when you pull it toward you, it wants to push it back as you're shifting gears. Uh, this is a little, what would you call that? You know, like a bearing, but not a bearing. That clip sits right in the top here. And then this pin, you just hammer out with a, a drift or something. I used, I used this nail with the end ground off. So get creative, but that is how I'm going to put the shift back together. All right, the shift lever is in and functions just fine. I wound up putting that spring on the very end where that ball was. After watching a couple of videos that were for different models, that was the only thing I could figure out. Uh, so put the, put the cover back in place and we should be looking good. Now, the other thing, something I wish I would have done is made a note on the steering wheel of where it was when I pulled it off. Uh, I started the car, I was driving the car after I took this apart the first time and discovered that this was all bad. And I put the wheel back on and I gave it my best guess. The tires looked straight, but it was about 45 degrees off. So there are index marks on here. You can see sort of a little, uh, dent there and there's a, a divot right there that I believe is where 12 o'clock should be I think over the years the guy before me he replaced the idler arm he probably just kind of eyeballed it and so the steering's off uh, eventually I'll have to get that corrected but it does go down the road straight so now well, that's how we're gonna do it for now so I'm gonna put the steering wheel on um, take it for a drive and see how close I got to getting it straight. And then I'll adjust and then I'll put the horn back together. I'll show you that. Well, it looks like the video of the replacement of the steering wheel and assembly of the horn is lost to time because I don't see it on my phone as I'm going to put this movie together. So, uh, but there are plenty of other tutorials out there that you can find that will show you how to do that. So I hope that was helpful and uh, I'll see you next time on the next automotive repair adventure. Good luck.